If you've decided to buy an AMD graphics card, you probably came across brands such as Sapphire, ASRock, MSI, Asus, and Gigabyte. Between each brand's graphics cards, there can be differences in cooling, design, and even performance. This is why you have to be careful when deciding on which graphics card to buy. As you may know, in the past I have created a tier list of NVIDIA RTX 4000 series cards. This time around, I have made a tier list for the AMD RX 7000 series instead. I will try to answer questions such as which ones are good, which ones are bad, and how the build qualities are. I hope that after this video you will have decided on which graphics card to buy. But before we get started, I have some clarifications to make. I made the rankings on this list by taking the averages of all RX 7000 series cards from the specified graphics cards. Meaning that if the graphics card has a great RX 7600 card, but has a RX 7800 XT card that fails to meet expectations, the ranking for it will be made keeping both in mind. To not make the video longer, I'm putting the other criteria on the screen. Feel free to pause and read. You can also find the sources I have used for comparison in the description below. Besides these, I have some warnings that I haven't made in the NVIDIA tier list video. These severely affected the rankings of the graphics cards in the tier list. I don't know if you've noticed it before, but many graphics cards have a slide switch on them. This switch allows the graphics card to switch between the quiet mode and the performance mode. This switch does not have a huge impact on performance in NVIDIA cards, but we can notice the effects of it way more in AMD cards. An AMD graphics card normally running at 350 watts can go up to around 420 watts when switched to performance mode. This results in the card getting hotter and the fans running louder. To balance this difference, I also evaluated the card's performance between the performance and quiet modes, meaning if a graphics card performs well in quiet mode, but operates like a nuclear siren in performance mode despite having good temperatures, I took this into account as well. You will see that I won't go into the details about some graphics cards. This is because looking for information about some AMD cards is like looking for a needle in a haystack, which is why I'm unable to give in-depth information about the cards. So, if you're left feeling unsatisfied by my explanations regarding some graphics cards, this is probably why. On the NVIDIA side of things, it was easier to put a tier list together and provide details as there were more sources of information and benchmarks, but the same cannot be said for AMD. Now that I've made my warnings, we can move on to the tier list. Let's start with the D tier. You might be wondering where the F tier is. Contrary to the NVIDIA tier list, there isn't an F tier here. I don't think there are any AMD graphics cards that are bad enough to be put in the F tier. Even the worst graphics card I can think of can only be placed at the very bottom of the D tier. I don't want to put it on the F tier. The graphics cards in the D tier are cards that can satisfy your needs as long as your expectations are not very high. Try to go with the cards that are on the left side of the D tier. I think the cards that are on the right side should only be purchased in case of a great sale. Power Color Fighter with two fans. Fighter cards are PowerColor's entry-level graphics cards. As it's smaller than its alternatives and tends to heat up relatively more, I've decided to place it in D-tier's last place. But this, relatively more, is around 70 to 75 degrees, and even this is pretty good. Besides this, if you're looking for a nicer-looking card with blue or purple lighting, you can look into the PowerColor Hellhound cards, which I'll get into later. XFX Swift it's really hard to find information on this card. There is plenty of information about the RX 6000 series, but it was hard to find information on the RX 7000 series, probably because the only two cards in the series are the RX 7600 and the RX 7600 XT. As they are much bigger than the fighter cards, I'm placing them here. Before moving on to the other graphics card, there's something I'd like to mention. Choosing the right AMD graphics card is important, but the web browser you use is just as crucial. Opera might be exactly what you need. Opera's powerful AI tool, Aria, helps you get answers faster. Using control slash or command slash, you can quickly access Aria and ask any questions you have. Aria's image generation feature lets you generate images, while image recognition allows you to analyze uploaded images. Opera focuses on user experience as well. If you've ever wished for a second screen, Opera's split screen feature solves that. You can open two tabs in the same browser window and work on them simultaneously. Opera's floating music player lets you play or skip songs without interrupting your work, even outside the browser. Let me mention a few more features that can speed up your work. Tab traces. 
A thin line appears under your tabs. The darker the underscore, the more recently you visited the tab. Tab Islands. Group your tabs by context and expand or collapse to save space. Opera also offers many customization options. You can customize animations, sound effects, and colors to suit your preferences. Aurora is my favorite theme, by the way. If you're looking for a fast and powerful browser, use the link in the description to download Opera for free. Now let's get back to the video. MSI Mech. It's hard to find information on this card too. In general, it's hard to find information on AMV graphics cards, so I think brands should invest more in marketing. The MSI Mech is a card that is similar to the Ventus, so you shouldn't get your expectations up too high. No exaggeration, it's impossible to find information on this card besides a few user reviews on Amazon. By the way, if we look into the statement made by MSI a few months ago, we can see that MSI's graphics card business would focus on NVIDIA cards, and AMD's cards would be pushed to the background. This also shows why it's hard to find information on MSI's AMD cards. Anyways, from what I've seen in the customer reviews, the MSI Mech offers a satisfactory performance but has noisy fans. Although it's a bit smaller than the XFX Swift, I'm putting the MSI Mech ahead of it, but don't overthink it. As I've mentioned before, finding information about these cards and comparing them side by side is really difficult. Plus, as the GPU gets higher, the Mech will start to fall short more and more, similar to the Ventus cards. PowerColor Hellhound with two fans. We can call the PowerColor Hellhound an improved fighter. Its fans are around 10 millimeters larger than the fighter cards and the VRMs have been improved. The temperatures and the cooling performance is really close to the fighter cards. Sapphire Pulse with two fans. We have to separate this card from the other cards I've listed until this point. I was a little worried due to the high temperatures of Pulse cards in the RX 6000 series, but their 7000 series cards have better cooling performance than all of the other cards I've listed until this point. We can clearly see this from the fact that even the Pulse RX 7800 XT has two fans. 7800 XT graphics cards with two fans are very rare. Reminder. In the Sapphire Pulse series, only the RX 7900 GRE and higher cards have three fans. If you're looking for a graphics card with three fans, they released another card which I'll soon get into. ASRock Challenger. This card is really similar to the Pulse cards I've just talked about. Most of the Pulse cards have two fans, as I mentioned earlier. All ASRock Challenger cards, including the RX 7900 GRE, also have two fans. You might think, if even their RX 7900 GRE has two fans, this card's cooling must be great, but that would be wrong. Avoid this card at all costs. I really recommend that you do not buy the RX 7900 GRE card because it only has two fans and its hotspot temperatures go higher than 90 degrees. The reason I put it higher than the Pulse is because it comes factory overclocked. Pulse cards generally come with the default clock speeds and have temperatures really similar to the Challenger cards. Now let's move on to the C tier. In the C tier, there are cards ideal for average consumers that don't plan to overclock their cards. Unlike the Nvidia cards, I cannot say you do not have to go with higher end cards as these are pretty much enough because the pricing for AMD cards is imbalanced and the prices can vary by a lot between countries. C tier has some cards that we really commonly see except two unexpected guests, Asus ROG and Asus Duel. These two cards are placed right beside each other. The ROG series only has the RX 7600. Of course, the ROG is the best choice among the Duel fan cards, but Asus Duel has a lot more GPU options. Furthermore, these two cards enter the C tier at the last place because they are better than the cards at the D tier. Power Color Fighter with three fans and XFX Kick. The reason the fighter is ahead of the XFX kick is that it operates cooler, but this may be caused by the poor factory fan curve in the XFX graphics cards. On the other hand, there are preconceptions towards the PowerColor fighter with three fans, such as it having a bad cooling performance. This card actually operates very silently and very cool. Sapphire Pulse with three fans. I cannot make a clear comparison of this card with the other cards in the C tier because Sapphire's only cards that have three fans are the 7900 GRE, the 7900 XT, and the 7900 XTX. So the only GPU in common that I can use for comparison is the 7900 GRE, but there isn't enough information on this card either. Therefore, any comparison that we could make wouldn't be very correct. Among the three fan RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX graphics cards, there are many sources for the PowerColor Hellhound and XFX Merc GPUs, but I can't say the same for the XFX Kick. 
Now you might be wondering why I put the Sapphire Pulse with three fans on the C tier. I put it on the C tier as it's bigger than the fighter graphics cards with three fans, and because I've thought, if even the Pulse with two fans is this good, their three fan GPUs must be better. As I've said, I cannot speak about some graphics cards on this list with absolute certainty because of the lack of online resources. Let's move on to the B tier. In this tier, there are graphics cards that don't enter the category of the best, but I still thought were really good. The imbalanced pricing of AMD cards affects the cards here too. I can even put some of the cards from the left side of the B tier onto the A tier. They are that good. Gigabyte Gaming OC and MSI Gaming Trio. I will shorten these to just MSI and Gigabyte. These cards have a weird balance. In the area where one falls short, the other one is better at. They are pretty similar cards, but I'm placing the Gigabyte higher because there are more GPUs. MSI Gaming Trio only has the RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX GPUs. Sapphire Pure. If you can remember, I've said, if you're looking for a graphics card with three fans, they released another card, which I'll soon get into earlier in the video. This is the card that I was talking about. All GPUs of Pure Cards have three fans, and Pure Cards are different from the Pulse Cards. You may think that these cards are similar and have the same cooling performance, but this is wrong. Pure Cards are a little bit better at cooling. Also, Sapphire Pure Cards operate quieter than the MSI and Gigabyte Cards, therefore I'm placing the Sapphire Pure above these. ASRock Steel Legend like the Sapphire Pure Cards, the Steel Legend has three fans. Pure Cards are larger than the Steel Legend Cards, but as the Steel Legend Cards come factory overclocked, I'm placing the Steel Legend higher than the Pure. The two cards' temperatures are pretty close too. Power Color Hellhound. It has better cooling than the Pure Cards and the Steel Legend Cards, so I'm putting it ahead of them on the list. The overclock clock speeds are similar to those of the Steel Legend, but this can change between GPUs. Many people have a negative bias towards these cards due to the brand name, but some of their cards are so good that they can be deserving of a spot in the A tier. Asus Tough. The Tough graphics cards are on the first place of the rank they are placed in again. If you remember the Nvidia tier list video, the Asus Tough was the best card in the C tier there. It has better cooling than the Hellhound, and even some of their GPUs are so good that they can be put into the A tier. Now let's get into the A tier. The A tier is the tier where the best graphics cards in the market are in, and depending on the country you live in, you can find some of these graphics cards for really cheap prices too. Gigabyte Aorus Elite. This card is here because it does not have a performance BIOS mode and because it only has the RX 7900 XTX GPU. I'm placing this card here because it's good at cooling and has a good build quality like every other Aorus graphics card. XFX Speedster Merc. The Merc is a rather weird graphics card. It's generally compared to the Nitro Plus. The reason why I place this card here is its weird factory fan curve. The factory fan curve is very unbalanced, and performance improves significantly after manual tuning. We were able to get much better performance out of Merc RX 6000 series cards after manually tuning the fan curves, and the same applies to their RX 7000 series cards. These cards can also work really loud in the performance BIOS mode, but this is also fixable by manual tuning. I can say that this doesn't make the Merc a bad card, it just lowers its efficiency. Power Color Red Devil As you can see, this card is on the left of the Merc, but I don't want you to think that it is better than the Merc. I only wanted to place them side by side. I can't say that one is better than the other. This is mainly because I could find only one information source, except the it's a nice card belief that is common for Red Devil cards. But on Reddit, as a response to this source, I saw one user stating that it operates at speeds lower than it's supposed to. But of course, as I cannot test the card out myself, I cannot say anything with certainty. Anyways, if you are stuck between this and the XFX Merc, feel free to pick the one that is cheaper. ASRock Taichi, Sapphire Nitro Plus, and ASRock Phantom. I think that anyone who's knowledgeable about AMD graphics cards could guess that these three would be in the A tier from the very start of the video. But I can also guess that there were some people who expected the Nitro Plus to be at the top, but sadly, it isn't. I have to start off by separating these three cards from the ones I mentioned before, because there is another type of balance between these three. The Nitro Pluses and the Taichi's overclock speeds are the same, 
but the Nitro Plus is a bit more impacted by the BIOS switch between quiet and performance modes. Also, probably due to the size difference between the two, the Tai Chi cards have better cooling. The reason why Nitro Plus sits between the two ASRock cards is that our overclock speeds. The Phantom cards are generally larger than the Nitro Plus cards, which is better for cooling, but since the Phantom's clock speeds are lower, I'm placing it behind the Nitro Plus. Alright, let's finish the video slowly. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care, and bye.